Greetings, book lovers. As some of you know, I started my YouTube channel two years ago because I'd had so many friends asking me for affordable but beautiful bookish gift suggestions, and I wanted to share that list with other people who also love books that have been crafted with care, those books that have just something a little bit special. So here we are, two years, 50 videos, one and a half thousand subscribers, and lots of wonderful internet friends later with my third annual beautiful book review. I've got lots to get through, so I won't spend too long on each one. I'll give a link to each of the books below and on my website, which will also include the highly committed books that didn't make it into the video. But feel free to ask me in the comments if you've got questions about any of the books. So let's get started right away with some beautiful children's books. Anatomicum is the latest book in the fantastic Welcome to the Museum series. This volume is a curated guide to uncovering the mysteries of anatomy, from the muscles we use to show emotion to the delicate workings of the brain. It's oversized with stunning artwork and fascinating for the whole family. Animal Alphabet is a beautiful ABC Darien animal guessing game for preschoolers with peekaboo die cut holes and clever hints hidden in the lovely illustrations. I also like this beautiful picture book, The Hero's Quest, for young fantasy lovers. It's packed with vividly rendered dragons, wolves and sea monsters. The sixth book in Mina Lima's stunningly illustrated and interactive series of children's classics is a combination volume that includes both Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as well as its sequel Through the Looking Glass. The book includes Alice with extendable legs and arms, the Cheshire Cat with a pull tab that removes the cat and leaves the cat's grin, and a removable map of the Looking Glass world, among other delights for Alice lovers. I recommend this whole series, and I'll add a link to my review of the others in the series for you as well. I also want to recommend a second Alice in Wonderland this year. I know, an embarrassment of riches. The Folio Society have just released this simply stunning edition illustrated by Charles Van Sandwick. Long time watchers will know that I am obsessed with his illustrations. It's based on the limited edition that sells for thousands of dollars and it has almost all the same gorgeous illustrations, but in a much more child-friendly size and pocket-friendly price. I've got a lot of Alice books and this one is one of my absolute favorites. Tale of Magic is the latest in Chris Colfer's Land of Stories series. The hardback has a beautifully illustrated hidden cover under the dust, dust jacket that's sure to please young fantasy lovers. In this tale, a maid's only escape are the library books that are illegal for her to read until she uncovers a hidden book about magic. Prudence and Her Amazing Adventure is a lovely oversized picture book that makes clever use of cutouts and textured papers to create atmosphere as Prudence playfully dances through underwater kingdoms and plays in tropical forests as she goes adventuring. In Starfell, Willow Moss and the Last Day, the youngest and least powerful sister in a family of witches, who has a magical ability for finding lost things like keys or socks, suddenly has to help the most powerful witch in the world of Starfell find a day that has inexplicably gone missing. This one's another one with a beautiful hidden cover under the dust jacket, as well as lovely illustrations throughout the text.
Guardians of Magic by the brilliant Chris Riddell is a stunningly and profusely illustrated magical quest in which three ordinary children with extraordinary gifts come together to defeat the enemies who threaten the mysterious cloud horses. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse is actually my top gift recommendation for the year. It's the tale of four beloved friends who share a tender bond with simply gorgeous text and illustrations that remind us readers of what truly matters in the world. I think this volume will join those wonderfully profound children's classics like Winnie the Pooh and the Little Prince. It's a book of hope, a window into the heart and simply a beautiful piece of art, a book for anyone you love. The House Without Windows is an enchanting lost classic that was actually written by the author when she was only 12 years old. It's a lovely fable about the beauty of the natural world, making it perfect for a middle grade lover of the outdoors. It's beautifully illustrated in black and white, and also a sweet read for adults. As well as being quite haunting due to the mysterious disappearance of the author in the late 1930s and the age of just 25. If you're looking for a few fairy tale classics for a young person's bookshelf, this new series with the Snow Queen and Little Mermaid features foiled covers and magical silhouette artwork by illustrator Laura Barrett. There's also an interactive pop-up and play version available. The Wonders of Nature is a gorgeously illustrated storybook containing interesting facts and history along with fascinating myths and legends of the natural world. The cover is foiled, the page edges are gilded and there's a bound in ribbon bookmark as well. There's even a companion volume called An Anthology of Intriguing Animals if you're looking for more like this. Now in my recommendation list for beautiful fiction books, I'd like to start with a recent collaboration between luxury British designer Liberty of London and longtime publisher Faber. These two special editions feature Liberty fabric covers of Faber's classics and groundbreaking contemporary works. Milkman by Anna Burns is covered in a new fabric design called Small Town, while the cover design for The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath incorporates period fabric from the Liberty archives. These are really beautiful looking modern classics, lovely text type and beautiful paper. For more classic classics, next we have Thomas Nelson's Winter Season series, and I do have a separate video for these volumes if you'd like a closer look at them. 
It's a lovely limited edition series with die cut covers and includes a selection of classics that were chosen to reflect the season in which the main part of the story occurs. So for winter, we have Pride and Prejudice, Wuthering Heights, A Tale of Two Cities, and Little Women. Also lovely, if you're looking to build a beautiful but affordable classics library, are the new additions to the Chilton Classics series. These are beautifully crafted hardbacks with embossed and pearlescent covers. They fit really comfortably in the hand to read and they're printed on thick, creamy paper. The most recent books in the series are The Adventures of Sherlock, Little Women, Treasure Island, Northanger Abbey, Emma, Mansfield Park, Frankenstein and The Little Prince. They're also available with matching notebooks. This limited hardback gift edition of the new Australian classic novel Boy Swallows Universe is quite lovely. There's another hidden cover. It has decorative end papers and a ribbon bookmark. The book's set in 1980s Brisbane. It's a dark tale of brotherhood, love and unlikely friendships. The Folio Society edition of The Phantom of the Opera is perfect for the music lover. It tells the story of the famous musical featuring mysterious goings-on at a Paris opera house. It has a recent and very readable translation, along with these gorgeous and bright illustrations. Next up we have fantasy, one of my favourite genres, so I have a whole section dedicated to this. I've done a separate video on this collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses if you'd like to see it in more detail. It's covered in generously foiled gilt designs, it comes in a black slip case with decorative metallic gold end papers and a map that's been intricately and beautifully updated from the original. It's quite lovely. A Hero Born is another Folio Society release of a fascinating historical fantasy novel set in China featuring a young hero trained in Kung Fu who has to face mythical villains and a cunning enemy. Wonderful for the fantasy martial arts lover. Deep Light is another gorgeously designed fantasy adventure, this time with a nautical theme as a pair of friends face off ocean gods and sea creatures, heroes and pirates. I also did a separate video earlier of the occult edition of Good Omens. This one's expensive, but it's absolutely divine. There are still a few copies available from the Illustrator and on the Discworld website if you're quick. Try to snag a first edition of Gideon the Ninth if you can, as they were all printed with suitably black sprayed page edges and an embossed skull under the cover. This one's billed as lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space, and it's a lot of fun. The Folio Society edition of Howl's Moving Castle is simply stunning, with a gorgeous binding and lovely illustrations. This book was the inspiration of the Miyazaki film, and it tells the tale of the wizard Howl's castle that terrorises the inhabitants of the town below it, and a young girl who braves the enigmatic wizard in the hopes of reversing a hex upon her.
The Binding came out right at the beginning of this year. It's a spellbinding story of enchantment, mystery, memory and forbidden love. Waterstones has recently re-released a limited number of their beautiful purple sprayed edges edition, if you like that sort of thing, which obviously I do. The Deathless Girls is a gothic feminist retelling about the girls who end up being the brides of Dracula. I had this in my Halloween special, but it's such a lovely physical book with a beautifully decorated cover and stunning end papers that I'm including it here again too. A sequel of sorts to the His Dark Materials series, in the Secret Commonwealth, Lyra is now a 20-year-old undergraduate at St. Sophia's College. Her demon is witness to a brutal murder, and the dying man entrusts them with secrets that carry echoes from their past. The slipcase signed limited edition from Waterstones, which includes an embossed raven demon insignia, sold out before publication, but it's still available secondhand. The Starless Sea is one of the year's most popular fantasy books. It's a story of magic and subterranean libraries. The Waterstones exclusive is still available with decorative sprayed page edges and a selection of hidden covers under the dust jacket if you're looking for an edition that's out of the ordinary. Wayward Son is the delightful sequel to Carry On and it's about what happens to the chosen one after he saves the day. Waterstones released a really special edition with fabulous sprayed page edges and a hidden cover to match Baz's suit. Unfortunately, this one's sold out now, but a few have turned up on the second-hand market recently. Now my top non-fiction pick for the year is Invisible Women. I have the UK hardback edition, which is currently out on loan to one of my friends, so unfortunately I can't show it here, but it does have a clever hidden design on the cover based on male and female silhouettes. It's a fascinating book that provides a startling perspective on the unseen design bias at work in our everyday lives. From phones that are too big for the average woman's hands to the fact that women are almost 50% more likely to be seriously injured in a car accident due to the safety features being designed for the average male body. It's a brilliant analysis of gender bias and it's filled with a wealth of data. Highly recommended. I'm also always on the lookout for lovely poetry collections and this year I've chosen the anthology Poems to Fall in Love With. It's a gorgeously illustrated collection of classic and modern poetry that celebrates love in all its guises. From silent admiration, to heart-beating passion, to tearful resignation. It's beautiful. Another favourite of mine from this year is The Body, A Guide for Occupants. Bill Bryson has written many brilliant and hilarious armchair travel books, but this time his journey is through the, the human body. It's a highly educational book and full of fascinating anecdotes and trivia.
Booked is a travel guide for the literarily minded, exploring 80 real-life iconic literary locations around the globe with photographs and maps, ranging from Paris and the Hunchback of Notre Dame to Central Park and the Catcher in the Rye to Forks and teen vampire sensation Twilight. Literary Places follows on in a similar vein, but in this case it looks at fewer locations in greater detail, and it's illustrated with hand-drawn artwork. Now I have The Secret Life of Books by Tom Mole on order, so I can't show you a physical copy yet, but it looks fascinating. The author is the director for the Centre for the History of the Book, and this volume is one for the bibliophiles. It's all about books and how books and readers have evolved over time and how books transform us when we read them. Finally, for the history buff, you could take a look at World War II infographics. This is a fascinating history of World War II and it's told entirely through visually stunning infographics. Every year I include a couple of Harry Potter books. This year, of course, we have the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It's a massive volume, but filled with gorgeous illustrations and it's a lovely set to keep collecting. And there's also the much more expensive, but fabric bound limited editions, which come with prints and other goodies for the very passionate collector. I think it has the same number of illustrations as previous volumes in the series, but because there's so much more text, it does look a little sparser. And of course, we also have The Journey of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This is a great book for theatre folk who are interested in how the show was developed, from crafting the story to the team of artists and actors who brought the story to life. There are lots of photographs and interviews and notes about the production. And to close out the video, this is my Christmas pick for the year. The British Library's adorable Children's Literary Christmas. It's a collection of Christmas stories, prose, songs and poetry, all arranged in 24 seasonal chapters of adventures, festive traditions, tales of elves and snowmen and reindeer and fairy tales and folklore and good old fashioned family fun. It includes both Christmas favourites like Charles Dickens and Kenneth Graham and Ezra Jack Keats, but alongside charming, more edgy contemporary voices. It's very sweet. Now, if you are a newcomer to my channel and you'd like to watch my regular episodes that celebrate old and new beautiful books throughout the year, please do subscribe and hit that bell for video alerts. And if you're one of my regulars, thanks as always so much for watching and please do chat with me in the comments about your favourite discoveries for the year. Till next time, beautiful book lovers. Bye!